My name is Katie Brokaw, and I'm co-founder with Paul Prescott of Shakespeare and Yosemite. So there's lots we could say about our approach to text and the dramaturgy of place, but in this short video, we want to concentrate on the collaborative dynamics of this project and its aim to nurture the next generation of eco-activists and Shakespearean practitioners. As such, I'm joined by four collaborators, UC Merced alumnus Angel Nunez, UC Merced alumna and National Park Service employee Jess Rivas, and UC Merced students Sophia Andam and uh, Kat Flores, and we'll all be talking about the work that we do. First, some quick context. I teach and direct Shakespeare in Yosemite as a faculty member at UC Merced, which opened its doors in 2005 as the 10th campus of the University of California. Our current student body demographically reflects the future of the state. Students are 90% people of color, 57% of them identify as Latinx, and 75% are the first in their family to attend university. Our campus was intentionally placed in the underserved San Joaquin Valley of California, two hours west of Yosemite National Park. This highly agricultural part of the valley faces some of the country's worst environmental injustices. It has the worst pollution in the country, high cancer rates due to pesticide exposure, persistent water problems, and of course, the valley and Yosemite and the Sierras are suffering from an increasingly long and devastating fire season. In response to these contexts, we founded Shakespeare in Yosemite in 2017 to offer free outdoor site-specific adaptations of Shakespeare's plays every Earth Day in collaboration with the National Park Service. We work with students, park rangers, scientists, and community members to adapt, create, perform, and evaluate these productions. We had about a thousand people at our most successful production, our 2018 Midsummer Night Stream, with audience members who were a combination of people who came to the park just for the performance and hikers who happened to stumble upon it as they were walking through the woods. Each of our productions is 90 minutes long, full of live music and heavily adapted to highlight a particular ecological issue from plastic pollution to the ecological importance of trees. We see Shakespeare as an open access and infinitely renewable cultural resource. Unlike fossil fuels or animal species, Shakespearean texts are adaptable, inexhaustible, and invulnerable. Angel Nunez will now talk about some of our recent adaptations. Thank you. Uh, so recently, before prior to this latest uh, production in 2019, I was Silvius, the firefighter in As You Like It, a production for which I also worked on some Spanish language translations. Um, after taking that COVID hiatus in spring of 2020, this year, uh, this spring, we were able to safely film Imogen in the Wild, uh, to be, which will be released uh, free on YouTube as part of the Cymbeline and the in the uh, Anthropocene project, uh, which you'll hear Randall talk about tomorrow. Um, in this production, I play Arvaragas, and I also worked as an associate production manager and boom operator, which I, I find always quite interestingly, looking back on that, that I was not expecting to take on so many roles, uh, <laughs> but I showed up on set one day and I volunteered to work the boom mic. And I think that's one of the as many aspects that highlights the fascinating collaborative nature of Shakespearean Yosemite productions. Uh, so Imogen in the Wild highlights not only the ecological catastrophes of land abuse, but also the environmental injustices that disproportionately hurt poor people and people of color. My experiences with Shakespeare actually stem for, from participating with Shakespearean Yosemite, uh, which to me has made reading and performing Shakespeare a lot more enjoyable and accessible. Having recently worked with language and Shakespeare, I've experienced those benefits of site-specific adaptations when using Shakespeare's text and putting it through a lens, in this case, an ecological lens to highlight environmental issues. The Imogen in the Wild film is being co-created with a team of almost 50 artists, most of them UC Merced graduates and students who are either acting, writing, composing music, film editing, and designing. The companies bring together also professionals like Lisa Volpe, founder of the Los Angeles Women's Shakespeare Company, and Devon Glover, aka The Sonnet Man, Brooklyn-based hip-hop artist and educator. We also get to collaborate with a handful of National Park Service employees who are both consulting on the film and acting in it. One of those is our very own Jess Rivas. 
Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this, um, Dr. Brokaw. So I've been uh, in two live performances of Shakespeare in Yosemite playing Snout the Wilderness Ranger in the 2018 adaptation of Midsummer Night's Dream, and then Audrey the Ranger in 2019's As You Like It um, in 2017. And then um, this year I got to play Ranger Lucia in the Imogen in the Wild film. And one thing that um, just as a park service employee that the park appreciates um, about this connection of Shakespeare and the climate and addressing some of these issues that we're facing and observations that we're making in the climate um, is being able to connect the changes that we see in our environment and the observation um, of the changing climate and the way that it's affecting not only us, um, but future generations as well. Um, and as a park service employee, our mission really is about protecting these places um, for us today, but also for future generations. And, you know, as an employee, we work in the federal government, there was a point in the previous administration where we couldn't even really talk about climate change. And so being able to bring people together over observations that became very politicized and very polarizing um, was one path forward um, to allow people to come together, view these observations and feel part of the solution. Uh, the thing that I um, connect with personally about this project is um, being able to see people represented um, in their national parks and people feeling at home in these places. Um, one experience that stands out to me is being able to work with Vaughn Glover, um, who is the sonnet man. And um, I remember working with him a few years ago and in his first trips to the park, he didn't feel very connected. He didn't feel at home. Um, he shared sentiments of just feeling like the place was very foreign to him. Um, so he had never visited these places and it was something I related to because I didn't go to parks until I was 18 years old. And um, by the end of the third year of a produ the production together, I remember we were standing backstage and we saw a bear and then we saw a bobcat and Devon and I were just witnessing all of this amazing nature just doing its thing in front of us. And he had turned to me and said that he understood, he got it. He understood why these places were important. And now he's currently working on a project to um, bring people together, bring communities um, together and introduce them to their national parks um, through rap and through music and through art. Um, and so to me, when I think about the future generation of these places, when I think about who these places belong to and the few people who have access to these places, um, I think that a production like this is one way to reach audiences and um, allow them the connection to these places and make them feel at home um, in the places that belong to them. And so I'll turn it over to UC Merced Jr. Kat Flores to, uh, who greatly enhanced these productions with her original music. Thank you, Jess. So audience service of prior productions revealed that music is a big part of the success of the production, both in terms of people's enjoyment and their ability to really comprehend the show's ecological messages. So in, 2020, in 2019, I worked on As You Like It as a guitarist and singer for the production. And performing music on Yosemite's open air stage really allowed me to truly connect with live audiences while singing songs such as After the Gold Rush by Neil Young. And in 2021, I composed and performed two original eco anthems for Imogen in the Wild, which highlight the film's focus on environmental justice. One of them is inspired by Titania's climate change speech and appears in set the film as an eco activist video inspiring Imogen to take action against the destruction of the land that is being approved by her father, Mayor Cymbeline. So working on music has proven that lyrics are a powerful tool for emphasizing ecological awareness. An example of a lyrical phrase that will debut in my original eco anthem, Earth's Cry, is as follows. And when the spring and summer fall into each other, the world suddenly goes cold. So this musical phrase can have a lasting impact on audiences' awareness towards climate change. Music is a form of activism that transcends the constructs of academia and scholarly pursuits. 
Instead, it focuses on creating an emotional response in audience members to realize that we are the solution to the issues of climate change and ecological destruction. So I also get to work with talented performer, my classmate, Sophia Andam. <laughs> Wow, thank you, Kat. And hi, hello, everyone. Yes, my name is Sophia Andam, and I played Imogen in Imogen in the Wild. Um, preparing for this role has taught me so many things, not only about Shakespeare and the environment, but about the importance of theater meshing these very two important figures together. Yes, we are working on the play Cymbeline, but with our play taking place in both Merced and Yosemite National Park, we acknowledge the weight, preservation, and sustainability play in these two environments. As much as the play Simbling focuses on Imogen's relationships with Cloten, Yakimo, her husband, as well as other aggressors, it's important to recognize that she escapes and goes into the wild, whales in Shakespeare and Yosemite in our version. And within the wild, she adapts an appreciation for nature and participates in the fight to save the wild. And she learned that saving the wild is saving ourselves. We humans depend on the ecosystems of the wild and need them to survive. And in my opinion, and I think my classmates would agree that there was no better place to make a film with an ecological message than in Yosemite National Park. We use theater in Yosemite as both a tool and a visual aid to help the audience see the beauty in wild nature, see the amazing relationships that can be created and restored while in nature, and with that, hopefully it will make people then want to save nature and save humanity too. We're so lucky to get to work with people like Angel, Jess, Kat, and Sophia. That's what theater is all about. Indeed, the making of collaborative community-based art is itself a part of our message for it will take collaborations of scientists and artists, students and professionals, local activists and worldwide visitors to preserve and restore the habitable environments and iconic places like Yosemite and in the corners of the world where we live.